In the early hours of the 2nd of June 2010, 52-year-old taxi driver Derek Bird loaded his vehicle with a sawn-off shotgun and a .22 rifle and went on a killing spree across the county of Cumbria in the UK, where he killed 12 people and injured at least 11 others before taking his own life. The reasons for this tragedy are not fully understood, but it's believed that Derek Bird had a grievance against certain people and society as a whole and sought revenge by killing as many people as he could. Welcome to Evil Among Us. In order to try to understand the events of the 2nd of June 2010, it's first necessary to identify who Derek Bird was. He was born on the 27th of November 1957 in Whitehaven, a town in the county of Cumbria in the UK, which lies in the northwest of England, bordering Scotland. Bird had a twin brother, David, as well as an older brother, Brian. His older brother, at a subsequent inquest, stated that their childhood was, quote, normal, with no signs of abuse or neglect. In the late 1980s, Bird worked as a joiner at Sellafield Nuclear Power Plant, but had to resign from this position in 1990 due to an allegation of theft. He was convicted of this and given a suspended prison sentence. It appears that he had animosity to people who worked there at the time, who he believed had set him up. Bird then switched to taxi driving and worked in this profession for 23 years prior to his death in 2010. Outwardly, Bird, or Birdie to his friends, was a polite, unassuming man who would always greet his neighbours with a smile, and everyone was shocked after his rampage. Less than 48 hours before his crimes, which occurred on a Wednesday, Bird was in his local pub, with the landlord stating, quote, Derek was in the pub on Monday night, and was his usual self. He'd usually have two or three pints, and a bit of a crack with people and then go home. That's what he did on Monday. He was just the normal Derek. However, it appears that his actions were not triggered by one particular incident, but a trickle of disappointment, actual victimisation, and perceived grievances over the years, which resulted in him, as a consultant forensic clinical psychologist concluded after his death, becoming, quote, a bitter, resentful, and depressed man, blaming the rest of society for his failures, as well as suffering from a, quote, delusional disorder. Beginning in 2007, Bird was beaten unconscious by four men who tried to run instead of paying their taxi fare, and friends said that he changed after the attack, becoming more cynical. There also appears to have been ongoing issues between Bird and his twin brother David, beginning with a will dispute after their father's death in 1998. There's also potentially the issue of jealousy, as David was a wealthy man who made his money from successful land deals. In contrast, Bird would work solidly over festive periods in order to indulge his passions, which included scuba diving and trips to Thailand. Repeated mention is made in various news reports of Bird having significant concerns about being prosecuted by Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs for failure to pay his tax and hiding £60,000 in bank accounts, with him being concerned that if these secret funds were revealed, he'd be imprisoned for tax evasion. He's reported to have been extremely anxious and paranoid about this and claiming to others that his brother David and the family solicitor Kevin Commons were conspiring to have him sent to prison for this. Instead, it appears that both Kevin and David were trying to help Bird with his financial issues and there's no evidence they were trying to get him into trouble with the authorities. In the 48 hours before the shootings, Bird apparently had a heated argument with David. What this was about is unclear. Fellow taxi drivers reported after the incident that Bird was becoming frustrated with the number of cabs on the road, thereby reducing the number of passengers he got, and taxis queue-jumping at ranks, taking his fares away. Bird also seemed to be having issues with certain taxi drivers, with him being described as arguing with these men on the Whitehaven's Duke Street taxi rank the evening before his killing spree. It's not clear exactly what the argument was about, but one of the taxi drivers said that, quote, Somebody has said something to him, and he has taken it to heart. In addition, it's been claimed that in the months prior to the rampage, Bird had been in a relationship with a Thai woman that he met on holiday, 
and that after sending her £1,000, she had ended the relationship via text message. So it appears that Derek Bird had been the victim of a serious offence, potentially been jilted by a partner, was struggling financially, but was also convinced about being prosecuted for tax evasion and had convinced himself that his brother and family solicitor were out to get him. Add to this, he appeared to feel aggrieved by his fellow taxi drivers, including those he saw as taking money away from him by taking fares that he felt entitled to. In contrast, his brother was financially secure, which likely compounded his feelings of aggrievement, as he had to work all the hours of the day to be able to afford the luxuries he enjoyed in his life. This is all speculation, as Bird left no specific explanation for his actions, like some mass shooters who record or write statements outlining their twisted rationale for ending the lives of others. It appears that Bird was an expert at hiding his inner turmoil, which means that, in 2010, he was still the holder of a firearms licence, and was in possession of a 12-gauge double-barreled shotgun and a .22 rifle. Firearms are somewhat common in rural places such as Cumbria, where they're used to protect livestock and also used at shooting clubs, which are much more prevalent in these types of areas. So you had a man with a grievance against others, felt the world was against him, and had access to firearms. This was clearly a recipe for disaster that would cost the lives of 12 innocent people. In the early hours of the 2nd of June 2010, Derek Bird loaded his silver Citroen Picasso with his .22 rifle and his 12 gauge shotgun, which he shortened by sawing off the barrel. Bird then travelled to the village of Lamplu, to the home of his twin brother, 52 year old David. Bird broke in, and it's believed he killed his brother whilst he was in bed, shooting him 11 times in the head and body with his .22 rifle. At 5.15am, Bird travelled south to the town of Fritzington and was seen on CCTV lurking outside the property of his family solicitor, 60-year-old Kevin Commons. At around 10am, Kevin was leaving the property in his car when Bird blocked his driveway and approached the vehicle, firing his shotgun, wounding Kevin. Kevin staggered out of his vehicle and was finished off by Bird with two shots to the head with his rifle. A call was made to the police, but erroneously, Bird was described as being armed with an air rifle. At 10.30am, Bird made his way to the town of Whitehaven, the place where he was born, and had been picking up fares for years as a taxi driver, and he drove to his usual taxi rank in Duke Street. He called over 43-year-old Darren Rucastle to his vehicle, a man Bird had apparently accused of poaching fares and apparently damaging his vehicle some time before. As Darren approached, Bird shot him twice at point-blank range, hitting him in the lower face, chest and abdomen, killing him instantly. At this point, frantic calls were made to the emergency services. Bird drove alongside another taxi driver, Donald Reed, and shot him in the back, wounding him. Bird then looped back and fired two more rounds at Donald, but missed him. A short distance away, Bird pulled up alongside another taxi driver he recognised, Paul Wilson, who was walking in the street. Bird called Paul over to the vehicle, and, as he approached, levelled the shotgun at his face and fired. By some miracle, Paul was severely injured, but survived. Unarmed officers from the local police station had become aware of the shootings, and began to follow Bird, who pulled up alongside yet another taxi, and fired his shotgun into the vehicle, injuring the driver Terry Kennedy and its passenger Emma Percival. It appears that Bird was deliberately aiming at the heads of his victims in order to ensure that they died. Terry was only saved because he put his hand up over his face, which took the force of the blast. His hand later had to be amputated. Bird levelled his shotgun at the following police officers, and so they abandoned their pursuit for fear of being shot, but armed units were already being dispatched. However, Bird took this period to make his escape. By 11am, Bird had travelled to the town of Egremont, firing his guns apparently at random, with him beckoning his victims over to his vehicle before shooting them. Bird tried to shoot a woman called Jacqueline Williamson as she walked her dog, 
but she managed to escape. Bird then pulled alongside Suzanne Hughes, age 57, who was walking along with her shopping. He shot her from his vehicle with a shotgun, hitting her in the chest and abdomen, injuring but not killing her. Bird got out of the vehicle and killed her with a single shot to the back of her head. A short distance later, Bird pulled up alongside Kenneth Fishburne, age 71, a retired Sellerville worker, who he shot in the face with the shotgun, killing him instantly. Bird continued to the village of Wilton, along the way shooting at a teenage girl called Ashley Glaster, who was out walking, but he missed her. He then parked up outside the home of a man he knew, Jason Carey, who was a member of a diving committee that Bird had fallen out with. Bird honked his horn, apparently to lure Jason out. However, he was not home, and Bird then drove away. A short distance away, Bird came across a retired couple, Jennifer Jackson, age 68, and James Jackson, age 67. Jennifer was killed with a shotgun blast to the chest and two rifle bullets to the head. James was killed by a shotgun blast to the head. Bird continued his journey towards the town of Seascale, and, along the way, he killed 65-year-old Isaac Dixon with a shotgun blast while he was stood talking to a friend by the side of the road. Bird's next victim was 31-year-old Gary Purdom, killed whilst he stood working in a field by the road. Just before 11.30am, Bird reached the town of Seascale and shot 23-year-old Jamie Clark in the head whilst he was driving, killing him. Moments later, Bird shot Harry Berger after he reversed to let Bird through a tunnel under a railway bridge. Harry survived, but lost two fingers. The last two fatalities occurred within moments of each other. 64-year-old Mark Pike was riding his bike in the road. Bird pulled up behind him, close enough to touch the back of the bike, and fired his shotgun from out the window, killing him. Bird then spotted Jane Robinson, aged 66, out delivering shopping catalogues. Bird beckoned her to the window, levelled his shotgun at her head, and pulled the trigger, killing her instantly. Police again were on Bird's tail, but they quickly lost sight of him. Bird continued driving and fired at and injured at least three more people. A tourist called Samantha Christie recounted walking along when her attention was drawn to Bird, who asked if she was having a nice day before shooting her in the face with the rifle. She survived. At 12.30pm, Bird reached his final destination, the village of Boot, and this was the last time he was seen alive. He is described as looking, quote, dejected and hunched-shouldered while seen walking into the woods carrying the rifle. Armed police were now swarming the county looking for Bird, but it was already too late. At 1.30pm, he was found dead in the woods by Boot, having shot himself in the head with the rifle. Mass shootings are very rare in the UK, and so the nation was in shock. Derek Bird killed 12 people, and injured at least 11 others, with many receiving life-changing injuries, including amputated limbs and scarring from being peppered with shotgun pellets. This spree is the third deadliest incident in UK history, after the Dunblane Massacre in 1996, when Thomas Hamilton killed 17 people, including 16 children at Dunblane Primary School in Scotland, and the Hungerford Massacre in 1987, when Michael Ryan killed 16 people in and around the market town of Hungerford in Berkshire. Everyone, including the police, was shocked by this incident. Bird was not well known to the police, and outwardly, he seemed like an ordinary man. However, as already stated, it seems that Bird was an expert at hiding his true feelings, which included paranoia, feelings of persecution, and simmering resentment about petty slights. The police established that three killings were targeted, specifically David Bird, Derek's twin brother, the family solicitor Kevin Commons, and fellow taxi driver Darren Rucastle. I would agree with this, and think that he had other taxi drivers as targets, but was unable to kill them. The rage he felt towards his brother is obvious, with Bird shooting him 11 times, 
which is clearly overkill. And, in my opinion, him taking out his anger on his body. After that, I think that Bird switched his focus to taking his revenge on society as a whole and, like a coward, just killed people at random as he drove around. The callousness of his actions is shown by his calculated behaviour in trying to lure his victims into his kill zone, with him beckoning them over to his car window. It's clear that Bird had no issue with being up close and personal with his victims, seeing their bodies ripped apart from the blast from his weapons. A 12 gauge shotgun discharge at close range can remove a human head, so many of the bodies of those he killed must have been horrifically injured, compounding the devastation of their family members who had to be informed that their loved ones had been gunned down simply whilst going about their day for no other reason than the cowardly actions of a complete stranger. Bird targeted men, women, and on one occasion a teenage child, so he clearly didn't care who he targeted, as long as people died and he felt he was getting his revenge on society. Some of the victims used to work for Sellafield Nuclear Power Plant, where Bird was dismissed in the 90s, but no link was established between these people and him, and given how many people Sellafield employs, it's likely this was just coincidence. As I mentioned in the video on Thomas Hamilton, perpetrator of the Dunblane Massacre, the act of killing himself is an act of cowardice, with Bird going out on his own terms, avoiding being held accountable for his actions, and likely thinking he would make a name for himself, and leave unanswered questions for years to come. He likely, in his twisted mind, believed he would be seen as some sort of hero. Unfortunately, to some he potentially is, but I'm confident in saying that generally, the name Derek Bird will be associated with an act of unconscionable evil by a petty, cowardly excuse for a man. So, what are your thoughts on this case? Why do you think Derek Bird went on his rampage? Do you remember when this happened? Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.